In this video, we're going to go through how to use R and S to determine the relationship between different molecules, to determine whether they're going to be enantiomers, diastereomers. So what I've done here is draw out a couple of names of molecules. We're actually not going to draw out any structures here, just the names. And based on the names alone, see if you can draw out or write out what the enantiomer of each of these molecules would be, just based on the name. So press pause, work on it by yourself. When you're ready, press play, and we'll go through it. Okay, so the key thing here for each of these cases is going to be that we're dealing with a chiral molecule in each case. And for example, a chiral molecule will not have any plane of symmetry in the molecule. It will not be able to draw any plane of symmetry. So in each case, our chiral molecules here have stereocenters. And I guess really the, the take home lesson here is that the enantiomer. will always have the same name, but opposite RS designations, okay? So if we're starting with R2-butanol, what is going to be the enantiomer of that? Well, we're just going to change, not going to change the name. The name is actually going to remain the same, but we're just changing R and S. So it would be S2-butanol. And the Chiral molecule, if the chiral molecule is 2R3S, 2-bromo-3-chlorobutane, well, we would switch it from 2R to 2S, okay? And 3S to 3R, 2-bromo-3-chlorobutane. And that's the enantiomer. So, like I said, we're not even drawing anything out. We're just basing this on the name alone. And 2R, 3R, what's the opposite of R? Well, it's S. So 2S, 3S, 2-bromo, 3-chlorobutane. Now, I'm not going to write out a long, crazy name, but let's just imagine that we've got some molecule which has a whole bunch of stereocenters. Let's say it's 2R, 4S, 6R, 7R, 9S. 10R, okay, the crazy, right? So as long as it's a chiral molecule, so as long as it doesn't have a mirror plane, okay, um, then this molecule will have the enantiomer will be the exact opposite. So in this case, it would be 2R, so it would be 2S, again, we haven't specified exactly what molecule this is, so it's, a, it's okay, it doesn't really matter. So it would be 2S, 4R, 6S, 7s, 9r, 10s. So in other words, every stereocenter gets flipped. Every stereocenter gets flipped. So going from a chiral molecule to its enantiomer, all the r's will be flipped for s's, all the s's will be flipped for r's. Okay, and that is for an enantiomer because the enantiomer, remember, is the non-superimposable mirror image. In order to be the mirror image, all of the stereocenters on one of one enantiomer have to be the opposite stere uh, opposite configuration of the stereocenters on the the enantiomer. Okay, so we can actually also use this to figure out relationships between diastereomers. Now remember, diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. Okay, so. So stereoisomers, which, which follow the special case where they happen to be non-superimposable mirror images, those are enantiomers. But in all, every other case where it's a stereoisomer, but they're not exactly mirror images, those are diastereomers. So there's actually a lot more ways for something to be a diastereomer than it is to be an enantiomer, especially when you get to um, having a large number of stereoisomers. So what do we do about R2-butanol? Uh, is it possible for us to even have a diastereomer of R2-butanol. Well, if we switched R for S, we would actually get the enantiomer, right? And those would be mirror images of each other. So it's actually, there's actually none. There's no diastereomer of R2-butanol, okay? Now previously, with 2R3S, 2-bromo-3-chlorobutane, we said that 2S3R was the enantiomer, right? Well, what would be the diastereomer? The diastereomer 
So anything which is not the exact mirror image of this molecule, but is still a stereo, still a stereo isomer, is going to be the diastereomer. So for example, let's just keep one thing the same. Okay, I'm going to keep one thing the same. So 2R, we know that's the enantiomer. So 2R, and what about 3R? You know, 2 bromo, same name, right? Same name, just different arrangement of atoms in space. So 2R, 3R, 2 bromo, 3 chlorobutane, right? Can't be the mirror image. Why not? Because this is the same. 2R, 2, 2 R, it's the same. Except this part's different. So different arrangement, but not enantiomers. And similarly, we could do, um, let's see, we could do 2R, 3, well, we can't, we can't do 2R, 3S, right? We could do 2S, and we could do we could do 2s and then 3s. So we keep 3s the same. In this case, 2s and 3s are the same. And then 2 bromo, 3 chloro, butane. So those would both be diastereomers. Okay, and diastereomers, remember, is a relationship, right? You can't have a diastereomer in a vacuum. You're always comparing it to things. It's like, you know, in order to have a brother, you have to, there has to be two children. Right? You can't have a single child have a brother. So you're not looking at things in a vacuum. It's a relationship. So we're relation, it's the relationship between this compound on the left and these compounds on the right. Okay, so this molecule on the bottom here, 2R, 3R, 2-bromo. Uh, so in this case, the, the, we already talked about what the enantiomer would be. So the enantiomer, one of the diastereomers would be keep one thing the same. So 2R and let's say 3S. Um, 2 bromo, 2 bromo, 3 chloro, butane. Or we keep, let's say, we make this one flipped and then 2s and 3r, 2 bromo, 3 chloro, butane. So those would be both diastereomers of 2r, 3r. 2 bromo 3 chlorobutane. So really with diastereomers and again we had our crazy example from before, you know, let's what do we have? 2R3 4S. Okay, that's too much to remember. So we'll just go through it. So let's just make up a crazy example. 2R 4S 6R 9S 10R. Okay. And what would be a diastereomer of this? Well, there's so many possibilities. So many possibilities. As long as we don't pick the enantiomer, we're good. So let's just keep the first one the same. So 2R, and then we can flip. As long as we have at least one thing is the same and one thing is different, then that's good. We'll have a diastereum. So you can see that, that this is the same. This is the same. And 4R is different. Um, and then the rest is all the same. Still counts as a diastereomer because it's not exactly the same. It's not an enantiomer because they're not uh, exactly opposite to each other. So these are diastereomers. You see the number of diastereomers really is gonna outnumber the number of enantiomers here. Okay, because we've got five stereocenters. We've got possibility of two to the five stereoisomers. And only one is gonna be the enantiomer. And the other 31 are going to be diastereomers. Okay, so diastereomers really do outnumber enantiomers. So that's really how we use R and S to determine relationships. Just that, you know, the key thing is that the enantiomer will always have the opposite RS. And diastereomers, you will have one of the R and the S is going to be the same, at least one, and at least one will be different. And if you fulfill that condition, then you're looking at diastereomers. And the key thing here also is that we're looking at chiral, um, you know, in order to figure out an enantiomer, in order for a molecule to have an enantiomer, it has to have it has to be a chiral molecule, can't have a mirror plane. Okay.